OCA. Ocala. Right, it is five minutes after 10 o'clock Thursday morning. It's time to talk golf. This show is called Let's Talk Golf, and Jim Beckett is in the studio. Jim is a P- PGA professional and the golf college founder at the links of Spruce Creek South. I'm sure you all know that. Uh, Darren Irwin is also in the studio today. He's the director of operations at the links of Spruce Creek South, and I'm guessing this is a good time for golfing, except for maybe the, the rain that's been coming our way. Good morning to both of you, Jim and Darren. Good morning, both of you. Nice to be here. There you are. There you are. How are, you? How are you? Always pleasant to come to the radio show. Good. I'm glad you enjoy it. It is kind of fun, isn't it? It is. Got exciting music. It's kind of like kick, Love the music. Kicking off something really exciting, right? Love the music. <laughs> so what's what's the uh, has the weather effect? We've had a lot of rain. Has it affected the golf course? We, we we've had a lot of rain, uh, you know, but but fortunately it's been a little bit later in the day down our way. Uh, uh, you know, with the temperatures climbing in the afternoon too, you know, it's scaring a few people off. As oh, really? Well. But uh, we've really needed the rain. It's uh, you know, we, we had a, a wetter than average winter, but it's been dry the past month and a half or so. So the wet, the rain is a welcome sight right now. And that's an important. That's something you keep your eye on, isn't it? Because you got to supplement the lawn if you don't have the rain, right? Absolutely. If nature doesn't do it, you've got to do it. Right? Absolutely. Every day. Every day. Is it always manual or is it, is it computerized somehow? Actually. Uh, we own a few exotic airplanes that are tankers, and we can fly over <laughs> exactly where we want it. See, if this was show number one, I would have believed that. <laughs> this is not show number one. It's all automated. <laughs> it's very exotic, automa- automated, computerized. It's pretty scientific. See, now that part I'm not sure whether to believe or not. No. Oh, that, that is true. Okay, yeah. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. They control the amount and the when, and that really helps a lot. It's conserving the water and yet getting the job done more efficient. Oh, okay, okay. I learned that all from him. And and does, does the water ever, like, do you, maybe not here in, in central Florida, but in other areas, like maybe drier areas, do they gather the rain to hold on to it to when it's needed? Well, unfortunately, uh, down around our neck of the woods, uh, you know, we don't actually have any retention areas that hold storm water runoff. We, we actually water straight from an aquifer. Uh, which is a little unique. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think yeah, Jim we, we ta- always said that. We, I think we talked about this a couple of yeah, shows ago, but yeah, uh, yeah. we actually draw straight from an aquifer. I mean, we would love to have the storm water. I mean, there's nothing like the good old rain, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, we just don't have access to it. We are promoting a, a golf tournament right now that we're teaming up with Life South, the Blood, Blood Center. So. Cool. So Where is that going to be? Do you know, I don't know. I don't know the details. See, Larry, of it. you're the voice. <laughs> well, in this particular case, I think it was Dan that was the voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, of this one, uh, yeah, but I, I, you know, I don't know. It's just exciting when I hear these things because I know sort of what it's like. And we want to run another one with you guys. That'll be in the plans shortly. Oh, good, good. Yeah, that was the best one. See, I love when you say that because it, that, was that means I was term. part of one that was the best one. Uh, Which means I had nothing to do with it other than to show up. Tournaments require a lot of detail, a lot of planning, and you've got to stay ahead of the ball or to run over you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. your tournament was a great tournament. Do do the average uh, golf course goers appreciate a tournament, or does do this, does the tournament like if I if I showed up one morning and I said, "Come on, to my friend, let's go play golf." Oh no, there's a tournament. Or or do I say, "Oh, this is cool. There's a tournament." Uh, I think the majority of golfers love the organized event. We're beginning to do more things like that because that tends to be, it draws the kind of people you like to support, obviously supports the golf course. We're beginning to run something that you could play in very comfortably. Uh, we're going to have two summer scrambles on late, late in the day, 3.30 or 4 o'clock, uh-huh. and you play nine holes. And uh, a scramble is when you use each of the four golfers their best shot and the other three shots you don't have to use so you could you could Which come and just cool. enjoy the round and um, <coughs> and if you happen to hit a good shot and we use it then you feel good <laughs> but you don't have the pressure of playing you know great yeah. golf so it's a camaraderie getting out hitting that ball having some fun and those are going to fly pretty strong i think 
And uh, we are starting our, our full first organized five-day golf school, actually next Monday. Uh, it's where the golfer can come and spend a half a day out on our professional practice area for two uh -huh. hours uh -huh. and then in our world-class simulator, which you've been to, the air-conditioned uh, yeah, yeah. learning center for two hours. Um, and uh, Darren has uh, made it real attractive. If you opt to take the whole course, you get rounds of golf for free. So we're accommodating right? oh, wow. everything the golfer needs. We've got the restaurant now that can feed them some good food. Right, right. We've got a great pro shop. If they need merchandise or product at a better price than most, we have the golf college. Right, right. Now having a full-fledged golf school format. And, of course, we have the golf course, which you've experienced. So we kind of have a, due to Darren's tenacious work, we kind of have the full package finally. That is awesome. So do you, we can do you, provide everything the golfer really wants. Do you attract guests from far away? And I mean, how far do they typically travel? Are they uh, normally from right here in, the, in our own backyard? Uh, well, primarily, but we have had people from Alaska. From Alaska? Yeah. They, that was a coincidence, or they came here specifically yeah, the for most that? most unique one we had. And <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this one he is going to tell you about. These folks, yeah. uh, and this did happen just a few weeks ago. We had a group of ladies that drove down from Valdosta, Georgia, just to play the golf course. That's the kind of question I want. Yeah, that's what I meant. I mean, somebody and, who... And we haven't figured that out yet, exactly, because they went by a whole bunch of golf courses closer, so something drew them. And it was just a one-day trip. They, they actually they, they loaded up in their vehicles they, early that morning. So you know enough to know that, but you didn't ask them why us? Well... Uh, we 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 really didn't. We just we were so fascinated with the fact that they had driven huh. so many hours just to come play the course and and have dinner at the at the grill. Huh. We think Boy, probably some people had. We probably think some of the group had visited the villages before. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. it's hard to get on the village courses, and they're more expensive, uh -huh. and they're not as good a shape. Well, bless their heart, they'll get mad at me for saying that, but that's the fact. So yeah. the golfers <laughs> proved that. So they probably saw us or had somebody play on that trip and decided just to do an outing on their own. Oh, nice. But that was kind of unique. Nice. So the people Very from unique. Alaska, either you were kidding me or they just happened no, to be in the neighborhood. No, no, they were here this summer, you know, but they were from Alaska. But, you, but I'm guessing you do have people like the ladies you just talked about who show up with that is their their destination in mind that's where they want to go that particular day that was a planned trip absolutely so somehow they found out about us from some source and uh, that is that's what they want to do and that is great I, I, it's I, fantastic I, I don't know if this is a famous golf course i know a guy who manages the hollow hills does that sound right hollow hills golf course on long island up in new york maybe not so well maybe not well known uh, it doesn't ring a bell, but they have a lot of golf courses. And I, I knew, anyway, he, uh, he did have a phone call, but I just wanted to tell you that he's, he tells me all the time that he gets people coming from Rhode Island, which is not that far of a distance, but you yeah, would think that Rhode nice. Island would have its own golf course. Rhode this Island way. golf courses are usually pretty pristine. A lot of them are, are private, and they're probably not very inexpensive. They probably are quite ah, okay. expensive so because of the sm a small amount of land they have to deal with. Ah, okay. And um, all that land in Rhode Island is pretty unique. So. You do have a phone call, so you'll need your headphones, Jim. Very good. And let me let you get them on, and I'll say good morning. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for calling. Good morning. This is Jim Beckett. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Beckett? Yes, sir. Uh, has there been any thought, well, privately or professionally, of ever going to artificial turf on the greens? Yes, uh, that has been uh, considered by a number of places. I happened to see one once, uh, but it was a number of years ago. A gentleman in Knoxville, Tennessee, who didn't know much about golf, bought a track of land. He actually bought a golf course that was pretty run down. And I think when he found out how much money it cost to get it back into golf course shape, he decided to put in artificial tees. And when he did that, it uh, seemed to go over pretty good. And then he decided to put in artificial greens. And, uh, oh, yeah. and I, I understand that the tees worked real well, but the greens didn't work so well. Um, he thought about doing fairways. And he found out how much cost there was in fairways. So in, in doing the, in, instead of doing the fairways, he lit the 18-hole course. I don't know how many people have done this, but that one I did happen to see. And I think maybe T's 
occasionally people do because they get beat up pretty bad and uh, they're pretty expensive to continually try to keep in good shape. Um, you can get artificial greens. They require quite a bit of maintenance and they're not inexpensive. So I don't know if you save any money. Darren could de defer to that since he knows all those costs. Yeah, there, there, there is actually, I, I can't recall the town, but there is a small nine-hole course somewhere in Colorado that I believe is artificial turf, at least the greens and the tees. Um, and uh, from what I've read, the, the, the cost to maintain artificial turf plus the, the, the additional cost of the actual install uh, far exceeds what, uh, you know, what you would spend actually just, uh, you know, using the, the real turf. Yeah. Do you, th you think it would ever be possible uh, for a professional uh, a course to, to go with the artificial and would it be allowed? Absolutely not. Not in the near future. Primarily because of cost. Uh, I would think. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Yes, sir. Thanks for calling. So, was it? There's no divot in the artificial turf. You don't. You don't pick up the dirt at all. They well, still what, require maintenance. What, oh, what yeah. happens with artificial turf is, you know, as it, as it's used a lot more and played on a lot more, you start to get some deterioration of you the would turf. Think, yeah. And you know, in addition, I've actually read uh, read some articles on this course out in Colorado. Um, they spend just a phenomenal amount of money on sand. There's constant top dressing to keep the, the plane surface smooth. Um, you know, in, in addition to the, 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 the actual wearing of the synthetic turf. Have you guys, are you the owners of this golf course in Spruce Creek? Yes, sir. Darren, you actually own it, okay. Darren, yes, Darren's the owner. Okay, so you couldn't have somebody, uh, like, there, uh, there was just a story this morning about Donald Trump buying this golf course in Scotland. Oh, did, that's great. Did you see that story? Yeah. Okay. I've been keeping up with it. <laughs> so help me understand why that's great. But first, because my first thought was, I wonder if that's good news or bad news for people like Jim, like the, like your counterpart over in Scotland. And he's like, oh, no, not another owner. But in your case, you have the owner right here. So somebody, like like the radio station. I Rob, Robin own. and I have had many owners. <laughs> I have my own owner. <laughs> <laughs> right, you have your own owner. Yeah. Uh, the one that he built in, uh, or he's, he's building all over the world, but the one he's building over there, uh, the locals are not happy about it at all. Is there a ferry in the room? <laughs> what uh, is that? <laughs> he's building a Taj Mahal, and the, the European courses, or especially the courses in England and Scotland, they uh, <laughs> are trying to get it. <laughs> That's some ringer you have yeah. on that phone. Uh, <laughs> it's not like Tinkerbell was flying around. They build their courses a lot more on the natural terrain, which already is there anyway. So um, they're not real happy with it. But They're not happy people, with him buying it? No. Well, a lot of people don't like him because he's rich and famous and does his own thing. But is he going to actually affect the golf course, or will his money actually... Well, he, does he really? See, some people say he doesn't really have that much, but he's buying stuff all the yeah. time. Yeah, he's a he's a wheeler dealer, that's for sure. So he buys it just he doesn't really does he buy it for the how do I how do I say this? Could he improve it while he owns it just so, for the sake well, of selling it? He only he only deals in high end golf courses. Uh, for an example, he took over the Doral course, uh, the Blue Monster down in Miami, and everybody said he did a phenomenal job. But he's catering to people with um, are the pretty affluent he's trying to build the Taj Mahal courses okay so the then high-end courses for, so he, he owns them for a short while no he wants to build his own empire and he's got a lot going oh so he he's doesn't let go of him like he doesn't no, no, flip them he's so got speak. a lot of golf courses he goes in and does the interior buys the paintings I mean the clubhouses the practice area and the golf course is top-notch so to let me ask you this Jim if you see Donald Trump and Darren you know, you see them in a golf cart, and you go, "Oh no!" <laughs> or, or, in other words, if if Darren is being courted by Trump to buy Spruce Creek South, would that be? Would you be worried about that? Or, or me personally? Yeah. Uh, for the course, for the for, for. I don't know how what his what his deal is. How he staffs things. Sometimes he might keep the staff just to keep that connection with the local traffic he's going to have, and other times he's going to bring in some high-profile pro to make his establishment be uh, 
uh, what a destination chart? point to the people he wants to attract. So you just never know. And I think as a rule of thumb, regardless of whether it was a golf course or anything else, you know, anytime there's a, a change in, own, in, in ownership, you know, I think people tend to be yeah. leery yeah. and cautious. Yeah, you know, the old standards, they're going to bring in their own people as soon as they get all the th- information. Well, and if you have your heart and soul into the course itself, just like Rob and I have our heart and soul into this radio station, whenever it's changed hands, just using that as an example, yep. it wasn't completely about our well-being, but about the station. I, I was sure. always, you know, this was, a, this was a wonderful station, and I wanted to see it remain that. And so far, knock on granted, it's, it has. Well, that's what's really nice. You know, I, you know, I... I, I I've only owned it for a short while now in the grand scheme of things, but I've been affiliated with the facility for almost 10 years. Uh-huh. And uh, Jim, almost you know the same amount of time. So no question. I mean, when, when you have uh, stability in your staff and, and longevity with you know building relationship with customers, there's a lot to be said about that. No question. Mm-hmm. So the idea that you can, just kind of going back to another question, that you can attract people from a distance away, um, does that does that stem from something that you've done as far as advertising? Like, do you put an ad in a golf magazine or something? Well, I you know I I, I can't say specifically. I I will say that we you know we have tried to build a little kingdom down there, and uh, we 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 do have a reputation. We're very well known. Uh, for miles around. Yeah, you know. I would think. Yeah. So, you know, but but whether whether those ladies came down as the result of something we did, you know, unfortunately we don't know. Um, nothing that I can think of anyway. It's very unique. Usually people won't drive that far. So they might have had another reason to come. We don't know, but we were still picked when they got to That's the That's cool, though. So yeah. we, were, we were the and, where they picked. And at the very least, we know that it was a one-day trip. I mean, they came down. We were their first and only sure, stop, sure, and, yeah, and they, yeah. they were turning around and heading right back to Georgia when they got finished. So there was a reason. There was something that brought them. Hmm. We just don't know what that reason Maybe is. they were journalists for the for Golf Review or something. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had that kind of stuff? Have I ever asked you this before? You know how when you go to a restaurant, you can go with this app online or on your, what do you have, your smartphone, and give it five stars and that kind of thing. Do you guys get that kind of feedback? Do people go on to their little apps and? Well, what's interesting, you know, our our our, our demographics are a little bit different. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the seniors aren't. You know, they're just finally getting in tune to the smartphones and how to work them. You know, we we definitely have our own app. We have loyalty apps where people can uh, check in, give us a rating, things like that. So. We're well connected with the, uh, you know, the social media, social marketing. Um, it's just our clientele hasn't gotten quite to that point yet where they're able to engage completely. Well, tell me about Golf Now. Yeah, Golf Now, uh, great, great, great point, Jim. Uh, there's a website, golfnow.com. Okay. Um, I, I think in the United States they have some, uh, I'm going to say, better than 5,000 golf courses uh, where you can go online and book tee times. Oh, wow. And uh, we're actually connected. We're, we're partnered up with Golf Now. Um, we have, you know, other than one golf course, uh, you know, here in Ocala, we have the most reviews of any golf course in Central Florida. Oh, wow. Where, where, where players actually followed back up after their round with a review, and we have a four-and-a-half-star rating. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of good feedback. But... Great place to book tee times and great place to get information about courses, golfnow.com. It's revolutionized people being able to make a round of golf more con- con- convenient. Right, right. Like you could be traveling to North Carolina and might want to be there and play around the golf. You can get on that website, see all the golf courses that are available, see if there's tee times available, and see the price. And online, book your tee time and know where to go and what's going to cost you before you start your trip. Oh, wow. No, and so you have access to those reviews so you can see what people are saying about the course before you decide to make that course your choice. Right. It's, it's revolutionized um, filling your golf course up if you're doing a good job. Have you used it for other courses? Do you, oh, I've used it a ton. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And are the reviews accurate? I mean, are they dependable? or the, is it the? I, I would say for the, most, for, for the most part, the reviews seem to be in line with what customers tell us if the customers uh, are willing to you know, put information out yeah, there. So yeah, yeah. I would say it's spot on. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Plus, it's hard. It's hard to kind of do a survey when somebody's trying to enjoy a day of golf. And and, and and the other thing, too, Larry, is they don't allow just anyone to come in and put a review of the course. You have to be a verified purchaser through Golf Now to even rate the course. Oh, that's fair. So... Yeah, because otherwise you could get somebody rigging it one way, good or bad. That's right. right that's yeah. right. We heard about this two or three years ago. Right. And it, it, it was over my head. I couldn't quite understand what she's saying. But you could pick up the phone right now and book a book a uh, tea time at that course at Toronto Trump in Scotland. Oh, really? You know where it was, what people said about it, and what it's going to cost you before you – make any other commitment and, and it's a, phenomenal and as an owner what's really great about it is it gives you a way to sell you know a last minute tea time that maybe would have otherwise went unsold and still capture some revenue on that tea time and, and do you have to pay them a percentage or something no it's no? Wow. uh you, you know they they, they basically ha have agreements with you with your point of sale system and things oh, like that it's uh -huh. it, it's kind of a barter type thing huh it's 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 been one of the neatest things I've ever seen. I've been in the business for a long time. It's it's been a positive f for everybody: the mm. player, the course, the owner. So the technology is not only helping you train golfers, but also just simply getting yep. everything lined up. That's right. Yep. I it's, do. I I pay almost all my bills. The only bill I pay with a check anymore is my rent. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, it's so quick just to get online. You're right. Go to go, if you go to the electric company, you're standing in line. This way, just right here in my office. All done. Right? Absolutely. So you do we, we knew you were a whiz bang when we met you, Larry. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, the phone lines are open, by the way. If you would like to speak to Jim Beckett or Darren Irwin, they're in the studio today. Let's talk golf. And uh, if you have a question about what they do or, or about the golf course itself, then it's Bruce Creek South. Um, and, you know, if I could just recommend it, go down. It's, it was fun. It was beautiful. Uh, the word relaxing comes to mind. I, I yeah. felt it was a relaxing experience. You'd like for, uh, on the side we're on, the management side or the what have you, to make the experience a positive experience, regardless of what point that is in your experience, whether it's the food, the pro shop, yeah. the personnel, the nice clean golf cart, manicured golf course. Uh, Everything happening on Mother's Day a week from Sunday? We do. We have a great uh, Mother's Day golf special, fifteen dollars all day, and uh, we're act the, the Grill Nineteen is actually open, taking reservations for dinner. It's a it's a limited menu, but but very nice. Uh, so you know we're looking for a good turnout there. Oh, yeah. Darren's a very good marketer. Uh, he stays ahead of the game, and people relate to that. You know, if you solve some of the issues about where are we going to go, what's it going to cost, what are they going to have, he beats them to the point. He lets them know what we're doing through uh, our advertising, our website, uh, and uh, email. It'd be a fun day, huh? Take mom out and go golfing with him. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we're real happy with what we did last week. And we had mentioned on the show a couple of weeks ago that uh, our hospice tournament was coming up. We raised about $15,000 for wow. hospice on Saturday. Uh, and oh, we're doing a uh, we're doing a big breakfast tomorrow morning. I think we've got 500 folks registered for breakfast. We're looking to raise another ten thousand dollars for hospice tomorrow. Oh morning. wow! Oh wow! That's awesome. So. That day, Larry. In addition to that tournament, which we we played about 60 more players than you can really have, like when you had your tournament. Uh -huh. They got that off in the morning, and then we had the first tee of Marion County, Greater Ocala. Yes. They had them come and play at their tournament. And then Darren, because they didn't fill the whole course, had three more groups be able to play all on that same day. Now, most people are going to take the time and effort to do that. So that day was a bonanza day. We had four diff I mean, five different things going on in one day. Wow. How many holes would we have covered in a half hour? Oh, three, just depending on maybe where you're. Three to, three to four, just depending on where you are. Does on it feel like you just played three holes? Because a half hour just went by really fast. No, it feel like does. we just teed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is your phone number? Uh, the, the, the golf course for tee times, 347-6172. And my number is 352-470-3876. And it's very popular. You heard it ring. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear it ring. It's only Tinkerbell. Uh, thank you, guys. Good to see both of you. Thank you, Larry. Love you, having Larry. you in the studio. It's always fun. Uh, we need to move forward, and uh, Pamela Coford is up next. She's the director of Court Appointed Special Advocates. She'll tell us what that is when we come back after Fox News. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. 
Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Two inmates are dead after the central booking facility for a county jail in Florida explodes. Over 100 injured. Injured inmates have been transported to area hospitals under guard. Escambia County's Kathleen Castro. An investigation is underway as to the cause of the explosion. Heavy rains drenched the region the last couple days. No word if.